And our first guest tonight claims his company is creating a coronavirus vaccine. And uh, depending on the approval process of the government, it could be available to the public by the end of this year. Joining us tonight is John Price. He's the president and CEO of Graphics, a uh, genetic engineering firm, and it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, the president is obviously pleased with the way in which the U.S. government, his administration, is responding. I think the American people are as well. Yet the left continues to make politics uh, an issue here, and they look frankly, to me, like fools for doing so. We have 28 uh, people in this country who've died of the, uh, of the coronavirus, and uh, 19 of them were at a uh, nursing home uh, in uh, Kirkland, Washington. It, this seems to me to be uh, a, a, a well-controlled uh, uh, response uh, uh, to this virus. Your thoughts? It is. It, it is uh, it's difficult when there is a death, any death. Of so course. you have to make sure that that people are essentially assured themselves that that there's nothing to be fear, fearful about but either whether it's a numeric challenge or or a or a made up challenge we do want to be respectful of what's going on but it is not um, yeah, we're very respectful here right uh, and let me say how I've expressed it to the audience of this broadcast this is not a nation of daffodils and buttercups uh, we are Americans first and we are, by, by heritage uh, and by nature, uh, men and women of some considerable character and stamina and strength, and we will be treated as adults, simply put. Uh, so I, I think that the president has done a masterful job in communicating that way with great compassion uh, and even inspiration in the, in the to the degrees that which he is now uh, opening up the coffers of the federal government to assure that uh, all communities, all groups, all identities will be served, uh, especially the most vulnerable. I came back from Vietnam two weeks ago, and uh, I can tell you that my experience has been that that people are in incredibly impressed with the way that Americans look at something like this. It's, it's, uh, it's something that they admire greatly. And one of the things that uh, everyone in the world admires greatly is our innovation, uh, our entrepreneurship, uh, and our science and our medical research, and you're at the forefront of that, uh, in the vanguard. Uh, and your firm and others like it are working very hard to create vaccines, uh, to create antivirals, therapeutics, to deal with this crisis. You uh, give us a sense of how close you are to having a, uh, a vaccine that you have confidence in uh, to move forward and to do so aggressively. Well, I have great confidence. In fact, uh, one of the things I do when I walk through our laboratory is I ask the question, does this work? I mean, it, it, you just look at your scientists and say, is this going to work? And the answer is yes. So then the question comes, how fast and how far can you right. go? And, and that is two part. One, uh, the way vaccines are, are tested uh, is out of the control of a company like ours. It's right. a government. So essentially what you do is you create a, a vaccine candidate, no different than anyone else. Mm -hmm. You test that first in, in small animals, and then you... No difference in the process, no, but correct. decided difference. Decided in difference in the technology, right. thank you. Uh, and, and by the way, we all think we have the best uh, vaccine. We know we do, but... Uh, and others think, and others think the same way. Right. And 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 the other good news is it would be great if all of them had had uh, uh, the right vaccine because there'll never be enough vaccines. You think there will not be enough vaccines for the coronavirus, or never enough vaccines for the viruses that we will encounter in the future? I think writ large there'll not be enough vaccines. I think I think it's it's has everything to do with how we prepare in the future, mm -hmm. um, how we're experiencing uh, the diseases that we see today. And, and if you think about it, mm -hmm. the flu, um, just the flu changes itself every year, and that's why the flu vaccine is done. It's hit and miss. Uh, and this past uh, flu season, it's pretty clear uh, that we missed, in part because of the mutation in uh, the Correct. four strands. Correct. Um, and... And I think it'll always be that way. And uh, we're working on a universal flu vaccine, uh, but but I, I think the more important question today is 
you know, the coronavirus, that's the one people yeah, want to know about. Um, and, and to me, the, the next question is, what's it going to look like next year? And how are we prepared yeah. for that? And, uh, and obviously right now, uh, the, the American public is, is focused uh, clearly on, on this edition of the coronavirus. Uh, and it's frustrating, I'm sure, for, for many to, to hear that it's going to take uh, a year, a year and a half to create that vaccine. Uh, your process is with a so-called dead virus rather than live virus. I'm sorry. No, it's actually an, it's an adenoviral virus that's right. been emptied. And then you put the sequence of a gene and that you synthesize inside. So there's no virus per se. Do you notice how cleverly I let you? I know. That? I appreciate that. <laughs> well done. I'm sticking with dead virus. Well, well played. The uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, I've talked to a number of people who think there's great potential for the the methodology you're using and the, and the train that you're on mm -hmm. uh, because of the vulnerable uh, uh, groups in the society to the coronavirus who could not withstand. Uh, a, a live virus or certain other types of uh, technology in the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, that the, your your approach may offer the best hope for those who are uh, pregnant women, uh, who are uh, aged, uh, who are in firm pre-existing conditions, uh, compromised immune systems, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, the virus most deadly for those groups. We believe that we have a, a, a safe vaccine. We, in, incredibly safe. And we believe that the methodology allows us to be the, the old fashioned business side, Lou, cheaper, faster and better. Yep. So we think we're better and we know we're better. We know that we're faster and we've worked on cheaper. So uh, I think it, it meets the needs of the, uh, the community at large. Well, it's exciting to hear this. It is also the reality that we know that the FDA, the, the trials that await you and any other uh, genetic engineering, any uh, life science uh, company in, involved in this enterprise, uh, and we want you all to speed up as fast as you sure. can. Uh, what is necessary to move this product forward at the fastest possible rate? Because the president has made it clear he wants to see things move very quickly, period, in terms of drugs, uh, in terms of pharmaceuticals, to uh, a, a, a waiting uh, and a necessary uh, to serve population. Uh, always money and right. always people. So, so what's necessary to move it forward, the $8.3 billion bill that was um, signed mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. with the support of, I mean, people like Kevin Brady and... and uh, bipartisan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. um, so, so what happens is then the, the money gets distributed, and, and, and that will be what's interesting next. It's, it's interesting, and, uh, and I'm talking with uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci of, the, uh, of NIH, uh, the, the head of uh, infectious diseases, a man I respect tremendously. Sure. Uh, he has talked about a year to a year and a half. Uh, you have talked uh, about accelerating that. Sure. What is the predicate for doing that? The desire to have a vaccine with a, a stake in the ground that says we need to have it at, at this is the day that we want it. The, well, I, I want to put something up here. And we've talked to uh, the uh, Department of Health and Human Services, uh, and uh, there was a declaration, uh, if we could put this up. Uh, the declaration by Alex Izar, the Health uh, and Human Services Secretary, uh, this U.S. public health emergency, he declared it on January 31st, follows a declaration by the World Health Organization, WHO, uh, that the uh, spread of the virus uh, constituted a public health emergency of international concern. WHO is the entity that would issue a pandemic declaration. A pandemic declaration uh, is not necessarily the purview, though, of WHO. The U.S. government has the responsibility, indeed the President of the United States, if he wants to accelerate things, he could do so with such a declaration, could he not? I believe so. And the other day on, on one of your news shows, an individual came out and said, we'd view this as a pandemic. Right. So... So well, we've said it here. That's for correct. Two and a half weeks. That's correct. So, so the issue is, if the president says it's a pandemic, it's a pandemic. 
And there is nothing that I could see that would disqualify it. We're in 111 countries as of the last reading. Correct. Uh, we have uh, over 100,000 people uh, in infected with the disease. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of them are recovering, uh, just about 60%, thank God. Uh, that's necessary, you think, to move forward uh, to get special access to money, to special uh, t uh, new deadlines uh, for clinical trials. I would say the, the latter, new deadlines. If, if you declare it a pandemic, if you say we're going to change how we introduce the, the, the clinical trials, if we change the, the uh, subject count, if we change the length of time, uh, a lot of these things um, can change the delivery date. Uh, By how much do you think? Oh, I'd, I'd, be that conservative. Would be conservative, six months. At, at, six months could, uh, could help a lot of folks. Um, sure, sure. Um, well, John, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, we wish you a lot of luck uh, on behalf of the American people. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, people around the world. Thank, Thank you. you so I appreciate it. Thank you.